Hi, my name is Marcus, and um, I'm also known as Link Steam. And I'm going to show you today what these different components do: diodes, capacitors, how to wire a permanent magnet alternator, some of the different uh, terms: star, delta wiring, um, and you know just what just what you can do with a permanent magnet alternator. You can being wired in three phase. You can triple the voltage. You can triple the amperage output of each of the coils. Um, so I'll show you how that works and uh, I get a lot of questions on circuitry and diagrams and I thought it would be easiest just to uh, to go through it and explain what the, the components do. So some of it's basic but I think it's uh, I think it's important to understand what these components do rather than blindly following circuit diagrams not understanding what what they're doing. It's re it really is pretty easy once you understand and it, I think it'll help you a lot put these together right especially if you're going to cast them uh, you don't want them put together wrong because then you're, uh, you're back to square one. Anyway, uh, watch along and uh, please uh, comment, ask questions, um, and I'll try and make it even more clear as we go along. Okay, thanks. Alright, so what's going on is AC, alternating current, is coming from our, our coils. And AC current are electrons just bouncing back and forward, uh, back and forth at a certain frequency. They don't have to travel a long distance, they just have to go back and forth. And to the degree they go back and forth it gives you power. And what rectifiers are, or diodes, these are diodes, these are like one-way valves. So as electrons move back and forth, the diode allows flow in one direction but not the other. So it's a one-way valve. So if you place the cathode end facing away from the AC and toward the AC, what you're going to end up with is you're going to rectify this AC alternating current into flow, electron flow. And you can make a circuit. It'll flow in and flow back out and get to this point and it creates a circuit. If this uh, alternating current has peaks of say 12 volt peaks, you're going to get close to 12 volts but diodes drop voltage about 1.6 volts. So out here you'd get about 10 volts direct current. Problem with direct current is it can't go very far because the electrons actually have to travel from here through the circuit and back. So if you've got 150 feet of wire that electron has to fly. Elec um, electron has to go you know 150 feet back and around and it loses power as it does. What are capacitors? Here's a capacitor. This is a hundred and or no, a thousand microfarad capacitor. Imagine a capacitor as a, a timpani drum, okay? In here, you got a drum membrane. Electrons can come in, hit that membrane, and vibrate it, or move it, press it down. On the other side, if you put, put a bunch of beans or coffee beans or rice on the other side and you, you bang it, the rice is going to jump, or the beans are going to jump back and forth. Okay? So what a capacitor does is it it will allow AC voltage to move the electrons on the other side equally. So it's going to hit that drum on the other side the electrons are going to bounce away from it. But because it's got a membrane in it, it will not allow DC or direct current to flow through. It blocks it. So that direct current can't flow through a capacitor. Now what direct current can do with a capacitor is if you if you uh, stack up electrons on one side of that membrane in a capacitor, it's going to press it and press it and press it. And when the voltage or electrons stop pressing, that membrane is going to bounce back and give back some of that energy. So it can do a couple of things. It can block direct current. And in the case of our wiring for our um, alternator, you want to sometimes block DC from flowing back down around, especially if you wire this in star. You want to block the DC voltage from going back down the AC line. So this capacitor will freely allow AC to come into our rectifier, come out here and produce our DC. So that's where you want to put a capacitor. It doesn't matter which, which way you put it. There's a negative side. It doesn't matter. It's just going to allow that AC to push those electrons through the diodes. Then what you want to do is put a smoothing 
capacitor across. So these would be tied. Okay. And what that's going to do is, is you get a ripple of DC peaks going like this. It's going to come into this capacitor, it's going to press up that membrane, and then it's going to give back. So rather than having, you know, peaks of DC like this, you're going to, you're going to get a much smoother DC. And you can use that then for your battery charging or, or directly to uh, 12 volt applications. Our full bridge rectifier is a series of four diodes. So you got AC coming in here, and you got AC coming in here. So two legs. In the case of a coil like this, we could use leg one and leg one. Basically, every time this coil is energized and this coil is energized, it's going to give AC. In the case of an alternator, we're going to get um, you know, peaks and troughs. That's flowing in here. And it's going to basically go through the diodes and give you direct current. So you can use current off the corners. That's what a full way bridge, bridge rectifier is. And this is this is a you know packaged one right here. And it's marked. There's the AC positive. So basically it would take the place of those. Okay? Same thing. And it's probably better because it's got a heat sink and you can put a, a thermal paste on this and mount it to a heat sink. Um, if you were going to uh, smooth this DC, you would want to place this to the negative side and link it from here to here. So it would sit in there across here and it would smooth out that, that DC ripple, give you a nice even voltage. So that's how that works. Now you could come in just with on a full wave bridge rectifier. You can come in with AC again, using the capacitor to block DC voltage from going back up and through. And the reason you want to do that is when you wire these in star, if you take all these three legs and tie them together, at that point then you've just got three wires coming off with your AC. And the way it works is the AC flows through coil number one, links over here to the star, comes back through coil number two and out number two. And so basically through coil one and two you've got alternating current. And all three of these are linked together so you could basically see a loop between one and three, two and one, two and three. There's a loop between all those. So in this case you could use three rectifiers for any of these or you could run these two to one, you know, one rectifier, doesn't matter, you'll see different configurations. Alright, so I'm always asked about coils and windings. Basically, um, you gotta, you got to strike a compromise. The thinner the wire, the more copper you can get into a confined area. So on this small alternator, I only have so much room to get the copper in. Um, but the smaller wire will definitely make higher voltage. But smaller wire, wire will conduct less amperage. And amps times volts equals watts. So it's a, it's a compromise. I mean, you can go for more amperage and lower vo voltage. Um, so I'm using 20 gauge wire here. Um, 20 gauge is good for you know close to 20 amps. And uh, what I've done here is I'm going to show you the resistance between um, here and here. So this is uh, the resistance running through my two number one phase coils. So we're running, you know, through here, through here, and we are at uh, one ohm. Now the design of this alternator is there's two sets of coils, so there's a, a set on the other side. So basically on phase one, I'm going to have a resistance of two ohms. Um, the higher the resistance, <clears throat> the more voltage you're going to make. And the higher the resistance, the less amperage you can push through. Um, this, this is actually a pretty good number for a, a low RPM alternator. Um, so that's, that's what we're looking for. The other